It's not hidden data. It's only hidden data if you don't look for it. You also recommend that if we're going to eat meat that we not have more than two to four ounces at a time. Aside from the other things you're recommending to keep the iron levels down, but I didn't understand about that. Why? The main thing for this is because most people digest so poorly. And when you see the pros and cons of vegetarian diet versus uh, meat diet, uh, a lot of vegetarians uh, do better on their blood work because, guess what, it's a lot easier to digest vegetables thoroughly. And when you don't digest thoroughly, guess what, you produce a lot of toxins in your gut because your digestion is replaced by putrefaction, and you get a lot of the anaerobic microbes, clostridium, proliferating in your gut. You produce a large amount of toxins. Uh, and as I like to say, uh, the whole gut ends up chronically becoming like another root canal in your body. So healthy digestion is absolutely essential for long-term good health. And uh, if you took an enormous amount of digestive enzymes, uh, chewed very well, uh, drank very little liquid to dilute your enzymes with your meal, did proper food combinations, uh, you could ingest more than that amount of meat per day safely, but that figure is picked because that's really about the amount of meat that most people that pay reasonable attention to chewing and liquid and enzymes can digest properly if they try to. But if you just uh, wolf down food uh, and don't pay attention to combinations, uh, you'll end up basically causing more of the meat in your food to rot than to digest. And I, and I don't really mean to me just be gross or dramatic, but that's exactly what happens. And uh, there's always some families that have some members of the family when they, when they go to the bathroom and do all their business, nobody can come near the bathroom for, for 15 minutes. That's called food rotting. That's called putrefaction. It's, it's not normal to have a bowel movement that chases everybody out of the house uh, for 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, a little bit of slight malodor is normal and is indicative of properly fun functioning digestive processes. Very, very interesting. You also talked about how it's good to give six units of blood one time a year, that it helps the ferritin levels go down, right? Absolutely. That's the most efficient way to get iron out is to donate the blood whenever you can. Uh, and if for some reason you have a condition where they don't want to take your blood because uh, you had hepatitis this out of the other, you should make an effort uh, with your doctor or to find a doctor who's willing just to take a unit uh, of uh, a blood out of you uh, and throw it away every couple months so that you can, uh, you can get rid of these six units, six units a year. The thing that's very little realized, uh, because you read most books and they just say, well, there's, there's no way to get rid of iron. Well, that, that's not true at all. Uh, obviously, you can by giving blood, but that's because you're physically taking the blood out of the body, which has a large amount of iron in it. However, iron is very readily excreted in the sweat. The thing is, is we live in a society where we give people much more iron than they need, and we keep them inside environments that are never too cold, never too hot, and just brings the natural sweating process down to just about zip. But when you use a far infrared sauna, you can get levels down quite readily because you not only excrete iron in the sweat, you excrete a wide number of toxins. Also some good things like potassium and magnesium, but those are readily restituted with proper supplementation. And so there's also a large body of evidence, interestingly enough, that, that sort of indirectly shows although there's a lot, of, a lot of evidence that, you don't, that, you, that also exists to support the fact that iron comes out of the sweat, is that it's very common in both male and female endurance athletes who, of course, push aerobic stress to the max and sweat 
very much on a regular basis to be found to have iron deficiency anemias. In other words, they just sweat their iron out so effectively that they knock down their iron levels to the point where they're not quite having enough iron in their system to make the amount of blood that they need. So all of this circulates and shows the fact that iron is something that you can regulate, but you need to pay specific attention. You need to track your ferritin to know that you're getting the result that you're aiming for, but make no doubt about it. You'll live a much longer, healthier life if you can keep that ferritin between 15 and 25 uh, and don't even think about having it in the hundreds. I'm a member of the Life Extension Foundation out of Florida, which is where I have my blood levels tested, and they're very affordable, where some doctors may not be willing for people to be in charge of the tests and the levels that they want to see. You can order your own tests there, which I think is really good. No, that's absolutely true. I, I've, I've been a member for a long time as well, and it's a very convenient way to get blood work done. It's quite inexpensive. I think the ferritin we're just talking about is like $30, something along those lines. And, and you can check your routine blood count and standard biochem panel for mm, $25 or $30. So uh, it's, it's, it's something that's uh, very easy and uh, your listeners should always keep in mind is, is a good option. They just did a very big article on coffee in their magazine. And without derailing our conversation, does coffee compete with vitamin C absorption? No, not that I know of. Uh, but having said that, I, I, I guess I should say I'm not aware of any specific data indicating that caffeine or any of the other components of coffee will directly compete with vitamin C. Uh, having said that, there are receptor mechanisms that facilitate vitamin C uptake, uh, and uh, you can have things that will compete with vitamin C for this uptake, so I should just say I'm not aware of that evidence if it exists. You recommend taking inositol hexaphosphate. What is that? Uh, inositol hexaphosphate. This is uh, also known as phytate, phytic acid. It's something that's been around for ages. Uh, most scientists, especially those that deal with nutrition and diet, know that when you have high phytates in a food, you don't get a whole lot of absorption of the uh, minerals, zinc, magnesium, manganese, etc., with it because the phytates bind it up so well. So that's what inositol hexaphosphate is. It's a natural chelator. When you dose it regularly, but importantly, dose it on an empty stomach so it just doesn't waste, if you will, all of its time binding up something that you've just eaten, take it on an empty stomach, allow it to get absorbed. It disseminates very well throughout the body and binds not only iron, but also uh, deposits of calcium, uh, and that's a whole other long story of, of the toxicity of calcium, but generally when you have something that's taking calcium and iron out on a long-term basis, uh, you're doing something that's, that's quite healthy. That's interesting. Do you take probiotics? Uh, those are the type of things that uh, I personally use uh, if, if there's been a little gastric or intestinal problem and I'm trying to sort of reset things. I might do a C flush, get that out, then initially take a little uh, probiotics for a day or two. I'm not advising against it, but no, it's not something I regularly take. What are your challenges to get this information out to really awaken an unaware public regarding vitamin C? Well, you know, the, the challenge, I guess in a nutshell, is trying to dislodge the death grip that... Medicine and politics, I say politics because the FDA plays a big role too, that medicine and politics plays <clears throat> on the dissemination of information. I'm sure the only reason we're having this radio uh, interview at all is the fact that the Internet has been in existence now for 15 to 20 years right. and very quickly and profoundly eliminated the uncompromising hold that medicine had on information before it. 
I mean, even Pauling, like.